overview of what we are planning to have in a couple of weeks, like I said, is an essential technical safety skill that uh, we believe that it's very important for us to know these things. There are a lot of them, but we can't train every, we can't bring everything as a whole. We need to bring them bit by bit. And what I've observed is that most of us will agree with me, uh, courses that we go to together are certifications. Most of us go, most of us we go for it because we just want to get the certificate. Even looking at training content, imagine doing, in, ideally having to go through the Nebosch material, look at the Nebosch content, for example, how robust, how wide it is, and having to, to go for uh, the class in two weeks to pass. Most times we just read to pass the exam. If you look at most of our professional courses that we do, which are very good and very beautiful, but uh, we as persons, we most times want to prepare for want to be there for exam, we just want to pass. But the rudiment, the main thing that we really need to learn, the technicality, the knowledge, the skill that, that, we, that we have to extract from this training are not most times gotten. As far as we pass the exam, and we are able to prove that we go through the certification process. But in this, my short-term trainings, in fact, while I was, when I was, while I was um, creating my content, I was like, hope I've not done something wrong by giving us this very cheap price, because I will tell you, for free that it is beyond the monetary value that that you will be paying for this training but i'm giving us an overview for us to understand what we have the training is 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 going to be three we are having accident investigation and we are also having the overton analysis and we are also having hsc data the trainings hsc data analysis good skills good knowledge Practical knowledge on this is going to go a long way as safety professionals in, 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 improve, in improving us even beyond the safety atmosphere, beyond the safety atmosphere on risk management, presentations, data analysis, data use, and how we manage uh, management situations that we come across. So today, like I said, there's an overview. Imagine bringing a course of three days, but it's beyond three days. We have to squeeze for three days and trying to give us in two hours. So don't expect me to give you details of uh, everything. It's just for you to understand these are the things we will be getting, we will be coming across in the course of the training. So also let us know that I know some people will ask me at the end of the training, can I get the can I get the training material? Can I get the training material? Let me answer that now. We are not having the training material for this course because this is uh, a like an, like like a bonanza, like a free bonus for us to know what we have for this course. So we don't have any training material for this course to be given out. All what we are having is an overview of the main training. But when you join the training train, when you join the training section, when you pay for the training, then you have access to uh, the training materials and the likes and every other material that we have for the training. So please let us keep admitting every morning. So uh, about our organization, uh, most of us, we, some of us know us already, we are into beyond safety trainings, we are into other companies, uh, management trainings. We are also into giving HSC support to organizations. We are into uh, site inspection, we are into equipment leads. All your safety needs, safety consultancy, we do all these things. So you can also reach out to other safety consultants. So this for example, for example, I'm seeing I'm seeing here that my network is not stable. Uh, exactly when we, when we look at um, exactly when we look at in the world of risk management, most of the techniques we are going to apply in accident investigation are actually techniques tools that can also be used in other uh, in other areas and other disciplines. So it's it's a, it's a it's a wide range of knowledge that we are going to acquire. So this training. Basically, for health and safety professionals, for safety managers, engineers, supervisors, and for everyone who wants to have understanding of uh, what it entails to be a safety professional or what it entails to work safely, because we are going to be dealing with so many areas of health and safety within the scope of this uh, course title. So, this training is for three days, like I said. But we are going to try and bring everything together today as much as we can. I think we have to ask, so we are going to just go through it uh, uh, overview, like the like today's um, presentation says. So we're talking about the basis of accident investigation. 
If you're talking about accident investigation processes, what are the processes involved in accident investigation? If you're talking about tools and techniques, which is going to take most of our time, and we'll also be talking about video, that is report of injury, disease, Seeing here that my network is not stable. Uh, especially when we, when we look at, um, especially when we look at in the world of risk management, most of the techniques we are going to apply in accident investigation are actually techniques, tools that can also be used in other uh, in other areas and other disciplines. So it's it's a, it's a it's a wide range of knowledge that we are going to acquire. So this training. Basically, for health and safety professionals, for safety managers, engineers, supervisors, and for everyone who wants to have understanding of uh, what it entails to be a safety professional or what it entails to work safely, because we're going to be dealing with so many areas of health and safety within the scope of this uh, course title. So, this training is for three days, like I said. But we are going to try and bring everything together today as much as we can. I think we have to ask, so we are going to just go through it uh, uh, overview, like the like today's um, presentation says. So we're we'll talking about the basis of accident investigation. We're we'll talking about accident investigation processes. What are the processes involved in accident investigation? We're we'll talking about tools and techniques, which is going to take most of our time, and we'll also be talking about video that is report of injury, disease, injured occurrences, uh, report. So we'll be having case study. This should be job as an analysis. That's the mistake. This, the second one is job as an analysis. I'll be talking about job as an analysis. Yeah, OK. This for the first part of the training. Yeah, the first part of the training on accident investigation. If you look at this first part of the training alone, we have, OK. My, so this is the first part of the training. It's not a mistake. So for accident investigation, we are having three phases. We are having the introductory part. We will talk about the first one I mentioned. Then the second part, we're doing case study. We have a lot of accidents that, that they've done the case study. So we're looking at these case studies and looking at what went on and how we could have applied, how they could have applied one or two of what I went to learn in, in the investigation tools and techniques and how we're going to apply it to prevent future occurrence. Then the top part of this training will be talking about accident data analysis and presentation. Accident data analysis is a very important aspect. When there are accidents, how do you present to management? How do you use dashboard? We have what we call safety dashboard. We're doing that together with the third day training, that is um, data analysis. We have what we call this Excel dashboard. How, how do you use your trend and pattern that you've derived but in the first place? How do you even use your dashboard, your safety dashboard? Then how do you use it to get trends and patterns in response to accident investigation? We also have what we call incident analysis to accident mode, preventive model. How do you understand this model? What are the basics of these models? How do you apply them? How do you apply them? Then uh, incident analysis and costing data analysis and dashboard. How do you um, transcribe or how do you interpret this accident, this incident to cost? How do you, how do you present it to your management? Then we're talking about report of data, accident data, and recommendation. This is just for the day one of the training. For day two, two is also there. For day three, is also there. Yes. Uh, we will talk about the cost of the training. The cost of the training in Nigerian uh, in Nigerian value is fifteen thousand naira, but in the in dollars, it will be 40, uh, 40 to fifty dollars, depending on the rate. Now, let all this one So I want to be fair as possible. But let's put it as fifty dollars as the case may be. So the training has been scheduled, but can be earlier between 12 to 4 p.m. from 1st to 3rd of September. That is the plan, and it is flexible, and we have it recorded. So, so that those who want to who wants to, to have the knowledge later can always get the knowledge later. So now let's go to the because of time, I might not really go into this in detail. What came to mind when you hear of this training? When people hear of this training, the first thing they ask me is, uh, what certificate are you giving us? What is this? What, what certificate is it? I think my own training that I'm giving, the soft skills training that we are giving is not certificate based. We are giving best book trainings that has to do with those essential areas of safety that we might not have gone through in the process of trying to get our certificate or risk for exams to pass all these big, big exams. But these are essential soft skills, essential technical safety trainings that we are giving. So if you build your competency level as an individual, that is very cheap. 
I don't think if you can see uh, a training of three days that is all these are uh, uh, big trainings and you see it for 15, 10, 000, 15, 20,000 euro. So we are giving it out at a very cheap rate, but the most important thing is to build your own competence level and to ensure that we engage ourselves in a way that we become much more competent in real health and safety. We are all learning every day. And as younger generations, we need to build on what our predecessors have already, have already lived for us. And that is in the area of expertise, in the area of competency, and that is what we are doing for ourselves. So the first part of this training is accident investigation, like, like I said, and uh, we are going into this for the first time. So looking at this pyramid, we will see that we have a lot of causative events that leads to uh, accidents, and there's what we call the incident pyramid. And it's, it tells us that there are a lot of ways that we could prevent an accident from happening in the first place, right from the very root. When I mean from the very root, from the area of unsafe, unsafe practices, we should have created barriers for it not to get to, to, the, to the last stage. And when we look at various things that can be done, such as training, having feedback system, safe practices, having reward system for, for workers, enforcement, involvement in health and safety, giving analysis of health and safety in the organization, it will help to improve the management system. And when we have that kind of a good management system, it gives a good barrier that prevents uh, near misses from happening. Near misses are very essential. Near misses, some call it leading indicators, some call, some call it lagging indicator. We'll still talk about that on the uh, on data analysis when we get there, hopefully. So whatever it is, leading or lagging, they are always, both of them are being used to know our trends and patterns and to know how to improve on the system. So when we have, when we don't have good control of our near misses, then we have possibility of having property damage, minor injuries, and at the end of the day, we have accidents. So this is just an overview of the implication of not uh, having safety management in place. And the major accident is the accident that we're talking about. So this training will be even beyond just accident investigation. It will be addressing accident prevention as, as a core because when you're applying your all these uh, tripod, beta, all these uh, bow tie, uh, roots, event tree, fall tree, we have a lot, we have enough, a lot of them. When failure mode effect analysis, change analysis, when you're applying all these risk techniques, they are always the same or similar to risk management techniques. When you apply it for accident investigation, it's also what you can apply for risk management techniques. The difference is that the, the, the difference is just that in risk management, you are looking proactively. Why in accident investigation, it's, it's like a reactive approach, looking backward at what could we have done when we apply this kind of um, if you apply this kind of accident investigation tool. Like maybe if you have applied something like three pot beta, or we have applied something like both time. We're talking about both time. We're talking about failure mode effect analysis. We're talking about um, what was it called? Event tree, fall tree, and like ten of them. We've been talking about up to ten of these um, uh, root cause analysis tools and techniques that we can always use, and it's part of what we have on this uh, training. So when you look at uh, well, just leave the title alone. I uh, also, I, I know, like I said, I've been trying to develop this content. So, when you look at the cost analysis, the effect of cost on uh, workers, on the on the management. This this is just a data for 2017 that talks about the various claims, various percentage that has been that was lost in the UK. I think the UK or US based on data that has led to loss of life and properties, injuries, more workplace injuries in 2017. This is just a data that gives us an overview. And these are also what is essential, what is needed when we present facts and data as to management. And it's not about the world at large, but when it comes to the core of your workplace, what is the value? What is the value of an accident that happened? What did it cost? Let them know it in error and cover. And those are the things or in dollars and cents. And those are the things we'll be talking about on that data analysis and incident cost and data model. We'll still go into those details later, hopefully, because like I said, this training is, is voluminous. That is why we have extended it for three days. But we just want to give us an overview for today. Hopefully, we are able to get to a very good, uh, to a very good number. So the 
objective of this first part of the training that's accident investigation it's the need and the cause of accident investigation why do we need to carry out accident investigation what are those Things that leads to investigate an accident that is cause of accident. Then, what are the benefits? What do we benefit from accident investigation? The analysis and the reporting of this accident and gaining competence in accident investigation techniques. This is very key, it's very important. Gaining competence in accident investigation techniques. How do we improve our competency level? And, like I said, the techniques that they use for accident that we use for accident investigation is similar to the techniques that they've been used for risk management. So, it's just like a two in one tool. Once you understand the tool, when you understand understand the basics, then you can be able to apply it in whatever way. Even beyond your safety, in areas of engineering, in areas of management, business management, finance, they use all these tools also. So it's like you are using a particular aspect, you are gaining uh, understanding of these tools and you can apply it to every aspect of, of life, of uh, any discipline. So also we'll be talking about using of safety data to analyze trends and patterns through dashboards. So we'll be using dashboards, talking about dashboards, how, to, how do we analyze trends and patterns, how do we communicate this? How do we put it in uh, in custom form? How do we present this to make it look real? Yeah, it is real, but most times in the in the state that we are now, uh, I I put safety as a developing profession because you know just like we have a developing world and developed world, you know unlike some core professions that are that are there at this stage, we are at the development stage that we really need to convince the managers at every point in time. Literally those, managers, those, those organizations that do not value safety, or they, are, they value it, but not at that uh, predictive stage. So we really need to understand other areas, skills that we can put together in order to convince our management. And that is the area of uh, trends and patterns through dashboards and also adequate knowledge of accident reporting and management presentation. So we won't, we won't be going into all this because of time. We have only have two hours to do the overview. In the main course content, we will talk about it in full detail. Now, there are so many reasons why accident investigation fail. Sometimes it can be due to pressure. You know, when an accident happens, the organization wants to restart, want to start working again. They want to start production. They want to start working. They want to start construction. They want to continue their operation. So because of that pressure, sometimes safety professionals or those the investigation team don't really have enough time, enough uh, required resources to carry out their accident investigation and the accident investigation fails. And at the end of the day, the purpose, the benefit of accident investigation is not derived, is not gotten. The lack of management motivation to complete investigation. Sometimes some accident might be so devastating that the management will not even want to continue the investigation. They, want to, they don't want to complete it. Sometimes it might be political, you know, because they don't want the real cost of the accident to be known or whatsoever. Really. So most, too many reasons, structural accountability, no level of social accountability, incompetence, poor established or, or no established accident investigation procedure. There are so many reasons why accident investigation fail. We need to understand why they fail, because when we understand why they fail, that, that, that is when it, they are just like loopholes. When you understand the loopholes, then you can be able to cover those, those loopholes and to see that whenever we are kind of accident investigation, we do not allow any of these reasons to occur to us. So, so there are so many reasons, like we said. So before we carry out our accident investigation, there are some things that we need to know. Establishing clearly low, clear, roles and responsibilities, who is doing what, when an accident happens, who is responsible, who is the first line of contact, what, how do we start the investigation, what are the procedures, is there a short term report before the root cause analysis is being done, or is, should we just do the short one and we don't do the long one, or should we just wait for the long one to, to, to go, for the, long, for the long report to come, what is the radio standard for reporting of accident? What do we really need to know? The competency through training, through trainings. Sorry, that's under that's an error. Competency through training of key staff members. When we carry out an investigation, who are those that will be involved? What is the competency level? Do we have a safety committee? Who are those responsible among the safety committee members to carry out accident investigation? When defined rules of communication established, when an accident happens, those that are involved in the accident, the witness, how do you establish this communication? How do we communicate the lesson learned from the workers to the workers? All these things are what we should have planned ahead of any accident that we might foresee could happen. Remember that this is not only limited to personal safety or personal safety. It's also, it's also, it's also extended to 
process safety. So our standard procedures have been established, our uh, rescue procedure has been established. And one, one good thing about these tools, these techniques and tools that I'm talking about is that it, it, it can give you a guide on how to establish your standard procedures. Uh, you know, you should have created it. For example, when you're talking about bow tie, bow tie is like a combination of fault tree and event tree. Because when you're talking about the fault tree, the fault tree is looking at Pre prevention of release. Now, why the inventory is looking at if there's a release, there shouldn't be any consequence. So you are putting barriers at, at each point. So when you have, uh, if you have an established procedure for your emergency rescue and whatever it is, escape emergency and rescue procedure, it will help you in having a good pre-accident plan. So these are part of the planning that we need to put in place. Then availability of applicable equipment, equipment to prevent release and also in the equipment to prevent escalation in case there's a release. So those are the, you can see that it works along. So while you are planning your pre-accident pre -accident planning, you will have known the kind of tools that your organization is using or the best tool for you to use depending on the kind of operation that you have in your workplace. So uh, which, occur need, which occurrence need to be investigated? Injuries, illness, property damage, near miss, yes. Uh, we want to waste our time on this. Again, the answer is all. Oh, we all know injuries need to be investigated. We shouldn't wait till there is a, till someone dies. We shouldn't wait till till someone have a serious injury before we investigate what actually happened. Even near miss, you need to investigate near miss. You don't say it's a near miss. Let's record it. You need to know what happened to what because near miss not reported. Near miss not investigated is a potential accident happening. Is a, is a potential accident that is going to happen if you don't put adequate controls in place. So all these are what we need to actually uh, prevent. So the answer is all. There's no really good time on that. So most of us understand the definition of accident. Anything that you do not plan to that and happened, and it leads to it might lead or the difference between incident and accident. I remember my first interview that I got, and uh, uh, it's funny enough the 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 uh, what what how should I address? The professor that actually interviewed me, my first interview was um, engineer Jamie Badmos. Most of us know engineer Jamie Badmos. Imagine having the first time interview in your life in safety. You've not gone down. Uh, I did not have any safety experience in my life. I did not have any safety experience in my life. And that was the first person that interviewed me on safety and it was on the phone. It was in the evening on plan. In fact, that, that itself was an accident. <laughs> Sorry, just joking. So he, call, he called me. And part of the question he asked me was, what's the difference between incident and accident? I've never heard of it in my life. I've, number one, I was just in safety. I only did this one, and they never taught me that in this one. The gen, what, he asked me what was the difference between accident, incident and accident. Then immediately, I did like I had network issues. You know, it was on the phone. <laughs> no one exposed me. It was on the phone. I did like I had network issues. So I, I switched on the phone, and I did some things. So don't worry. Let's go. So at the end of the day, I got the interview, and, and I, I was, he, he was able to, to put to... Uh, Communicate to uh, Mr. Dakomaladi, who got me my first intern in that was a long time ago. Please don't expose me, Abe. <laughs> don't expose me. <laughs> so let's continue. Let's continue. So incident is can lead to accident or may not. It might. It can lead to uh, adverse effect or may not lead to adverse effect. Why accident is one that actually lead to injury, uh, death, or loss of property as it case may be. You push not expose me now. <laughs> Most of us might be like, Jamie Bartman, don't say, ah, well, at least they do what they did for you. So uh, let's continue. So near miss. Near miss is an event that almost resulted in injury, but did not. <laughs> don't tell you. But did not result in injury, death, or damage. A near miss is a warning sign that an accident is likely to occur. So near misses should also be investigated. Yes, please let us admit everyone in. Yes. Direct cause. This is the most obvious reason that an accident happened. That that is the immediate cause. Please let us switch off our, our camera so that it won't affect our network. Yes. So a near miss is an event that almost led to an accident, but did not lead to an accident. It was an almost. It's all is similar to dangerous occurrence, and that is where uh, process safety is different from operational and safety. Um, in the course of the training, we will still analyze it, but it's not that difficult. When you're talking about open night and safety, it happens more, 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 and the consequence is not as severe as when it's process safety. Process safety are always devastating. They are always 
it, they are always very, very dangerous and it leads to serious life. They occur once in a while, but when they occur, they are always very serious. Like the alpha, Piper Alpha, those are process accidents. So when we're talking about NEMIS, when, when it comes to the larger form, we, we, call, we can call it uh, a dangerous occurrence. Even when a crane falls, it's, it's beyond, and nobody died, maybe nothing happened, or an item, maybe you're trying to lift an item with a the crane, then during the lifting, the slinch uh, gave way, and the item fell, and then it fell on anybody. The, the, the equipment did not damage, nothing happened. You can't record that as a NEMIS. It's, it's beyond the NEMIS. It's a dangerous occurrence. So that's uh, just the, that's not the, the little difference between them. So root cause is the underlying causes of an accident. And let's go on, let's go on, let's go on, let's move on. What's happening? Sorry? I'm trying not to miss any slide. So these definitions are very important. Process to determine the underlying cause of an accident. We're talking about accident investigation. You are trying to under, know on the underlying cause, what led to it. Then causal information used to identify and take preventive actions. What are those, once, once you've gotten the information, what are those things that, sorry, that are used to identify and take preventive action to prevent reoccurrence and also basic components of loss prevention. We can also define it as that. So benefit of accident investigation, we're not going through this, like I said, this is a short time training and we don't want to waste time on it, just an overview. So benefit of accident investigation, what are those benefits? We all, most of us, we know all these things. To establish the root and immediate cause of an accident, to prevent a reoccurrence, to serve as future source of information and research. When there's, when they, just look at, for example, the Piper Alpha, most of us, we, most of the courses we go to now, they use Piper Alpha, uh, they use uh, the probable accident, they use all these all these well documented accidents to to train us and sort of research for us to order to further research about safety and the process safety. So they can be a good source of information even for the organization itself. Maybe when they have they've done the investigation and they've recorded it. Also in the in the process of carrying out the investigation, they will have observed so many things, so many technicalities, so many technical information will have been gotten. And it's that, that inf the information can still be used as a form of research. So to protect companies' interests and reputation, when an organization realizes that, okay, there's an accident and they carry out an investigation, it shows that, yes, they value people's lives, just that they could not, you know, we are human, they could not actually prevent that accident due to some errors, and they admit and they carry out investigation. So those are part of the, uh, uh, the benefit of carrying out investigation, it protects the company's reputation, even though the reputation is under question because of the accident. But at the same time, it reduces the effect. Like they are not unlike when they don't even carry out an investigation. Just okay, it has happened. Okay, what do you want to do? So it helps them to protect their interests also, so that they can know what actually happened. It may not be their fault. It may not be the fault of, like for example, the probable accident that happened. Uh, even though we believe that it was a process failure and the lack of and the lack of management commitment to safety, some the the MD I've forgotten the name was saying that it was uh, it was a deliberate sabotage on, on the facility because it was a process accident where um, two chemicals I think water water went to a particular substance where that it was underground that water could not go to that if water to touch it is always exothermic so one way or the other due to uh, process failure water got into it and it led to a very serious event and it led to uh, and it led to the release of a particular chemical that actually killed so many people and got so many people into having mutagenic uh mutagenic effect on them and their generation so what I'm saying here is that sometimes it might be truly that in the interest of the, it might be truly that it wasn't the management fault, it was just an occurrence that maybe there was a sabotage. So when the kind of good investigation, it will be able to bring out the real truth about what happened if the management was not at fault. So a demonstration of commitment to safety of employees. Yes, it's also a demonstration and also save lives and money by investigating all incidents in the organization. Even a minor incident on NEMIS can be a warning of a major risk. So apart from the big ones, even the small ones, smaller ones that happen, when you investigate them, it's preventing you from, it's preventing your organization and organization from getting involved in a bigger accident. So we are talking about the bigger, the bigger picture now. now the smaller ones that happen, the near misses that happen, 
the injuries that happen when you when you do investigate them you are only calling on the uh on on a, 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 a bigger incident to happen accident to happen so the part of the benefit is that when they investigate smaller ones it prevents them from losing money from by preventing the occurrence of a bigger one so it contributes to the bottom line and it, it helps in improving the process so from that investigation a lot of things will be learned maybe from the smaller ones and when they implement corrective actions it's going to help them in improving on the process so benefit of investigating and analyzing accidents now investigating is one now analyzing the incidents using trends and pattern using your dashboard for example or whatever you use but i recommend as an advanced in, in an advanced mode for us to show that yes what we do is just beyond going to site to to look for us that we are we we, we we know what we are doing we contribute to the bottom line we contribute to the productivity and let us use various techniques to actually communicate this to the management and part of those ways is to understanding trend and pattern and that can be done when you're analyzing your accident how do you analyze like we said please let us let us uh, switch up our cameras. We don't want any form of uh, network issue. Okay, please. Uh, Abdul Hakim. Abdul Hakim is here, my very good friend. Please uh, help me to attend to anyone that needs my attention. I have seen so many questions. And I don't want to be distracted. That is my number, Nigeria, plus 234. Like we have so many people from other parts of the world also. So like you're saying, Identifying unsafe conditions and on, on behaviors. When you have when you have this these data already, and you are able to understand how to use this safety data, so it is easier for you to analyze incidents and to improve on the system also. Identifying organizational changes when there are changes in you know we will talk about part of the techniques we are going to use is change analysis. It's also a uh, an aspect of your techniques. What are the changes that occur? What are those things that is different from what we used to do? To, to do before that led to the accident. We are also going to talk about that under uh, accident investigation tools and techniques. So part of the benefit is to provide constructive feedback to the organization. When you investigate accident and you, and you have the chance to analyze your accident, like you are confident in yourself that Sir, this has been happening, this has been happening, we've recorded this for the past one month, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, and you are able to put it down like in real life, like in real life, we are able to put it down in, 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 in data form to your management. Yes, they will see that, yes, this is constructive feedback. Someone is asking a question, do you carry out CPR and the first aid training? Yes, we do. Please just contact us. Contact us, we, we, we deliver all those trainings too. Thank you. So also reinforcing best practices, reducing future incidents and prioritizing the safety and well-being of everyone in the organization. So, there are so many cause of accidents. In four ways, you can put it in management, environment, human, and equipment. The system, the procedures, that is the management, the environment, the natural and the man-made, and the equipment designs, the equipment use, and human behavior. The human behavior and the equipment use can work together because the human most time make use of the equipment, and the human is also the management. Okay. So, let's continue because of time. I, I, I want us to get to a very good because this, this training is very is highly voluminous and I want us to just have an overview of it. So if you're interested in the three days training, you can always contact us. So we're talking about the management, we're talking about the system, the procedure that we put in place. If the organization have a good safety management system, or if they don't, and even if they do, how do they review, how do they check, and how has this led to an accident? Those are the things that actually cause accidents when there's no good management procedure and when there's no established system of work. So lack of systems and procedures, also like I said now, availability of the management commitment to, to health and safety, lack of supervision and or accountability process, those all these things also lead to accidents. All those things also lead to accident, lack of accountability. Nobody is, is showing accountability for Please, if, if I, I can see that, I can see so many communication here. If you want to communicate with me, please, you, my, my, my number is there. It's okay to see. Because all these things are popping up. I'm, I think someone is from Saudi Arabia. So if you just start me up on, uh, on WhatsApp, I will discuss more on that. Thank you. So 
Inadequate communication can also lead to an accident when there's no proper communication. Remember, there's what we call CMOP, simultaneous operation. When is that when you are having a kind of in the construction industry, for example, where so many activities are taking place at the same time, there's what we call simultaneous operation. We call it CMOP for short. And it has to do with different tasks coming out occurring at the same time. And when we don't have good safety procedures, accidents are liable to happen. I remember some accidents that are, that, that are had that happened because of simultaneous operations. Some people walk, walk in adjacent to other people walking and it left an accident because of poor communication and poor procedures for operation. So inadequate safety programs and procedures, lack of safeguard, resource and equipment, lack of preventive maintenance of our equipment and non-enabling non tasks too. These are part of things that lead to accidents. So let's move forward. Environment it can be Physical, lightning, temperature, biological, reptile, microorganism, virus, bacteria that we can have. We have chemical, vapor, smoke, fumes, dust. So these are things that could actually lead to an accident. The equipment and the design, the work with the workplace layout, how is the equipment used? How is the design of the equipment? Does the equipment have a guard? How is the control of the equipment? What is the level of relationship? Between the work, the, between the equipment and human interaction. What is the level of human interaction with equipment? What is are the control measures for the use of the equipment? You know, those things come up together, and if not properly uh, used and communicated, can actually lead to an accident. Let's move on. Human behavior, omission, and or, com uh, or commission, addition or subtraction. I too know over competency. And we see this most time in the construction industry. They will tell you, I've been doing this for the past 20 years and nothing has happened to me. I've been doing it before you were born. And at the end of the day, when accident happened, they're the one crying in the hospital and begging for their, uh, they are begging for compensation. Meanwhile, when we're telling them about it, they don't want to listen to us. So human behavior sometimes is a very important aspect. Hopefully in our next uh, thing that we are going to organize, we'll be talking about behavioral based safety. It's a very deep part of safety. That we all that also requires the skill of a yeah, of, of a safety professional to be able to know how to deal with human, most especially in the construction industry and in the high tech industry, the high level industry like in oil and gas. Because in oil and gas section, you're having rich men and rich women, and to be able to talk to them, you know, you need to understand the aspect of human behavior. So let's continue. The efficient from SOP can also be human related. So, what are these procedures to carry out an accident? What are the Accident response procedure. Securing the area, we won't dwell much about this, just an overview, like we said. Securing the area, preventing uh, further injury, looking at the various other that can be in the area that could lead to further injury, making sure that everywhere is calm and well coordinated, creating a barricade, and limiting the other that has been created in the incident. Contact the appropriate person, those that are responsible, the first leader, the fire, the fireman, the emergency response team and everybody is required to be there at, a, at, that, at that point and create a, uh, create a barrier to ensure that no one gets within the area of where the accident happened. Then you, then you, you if, if you have been working in the, in the organization, all these things happen simultaneously. When you are working in the organization, you know, your, you know the workers. Immediately you are doing all this, you are citing those that are around. So you are using one eye to cite them so that even if you don't meet them immediately, then you can meet them later in order to talk about whatever happen to whatever whatever happened during the time of the investigation and most times they are always very scared that's the truth because they believe that you might want to blame and this is where it comes to the area of you having a culture where you don't blame if you are in a culture in a workplace where there is always a deep culture workers might not even want to speak up because they will see that maybe you want to indict them or something so you need to start preserving the evidence that you see around start labeling if, if it's bad labeling preserving them that you need for investigation investigation Take photos, take pictures. Safety officers, we are also good photographers. Safety professionals, generally, we are good photographers. It's part of our job. So we are doing so many things at a time. We are working as a lawyer, we are working as a doctor, we are working as a nurse, we are working as a manager, we are working as a technician. We are, we are trying to understand the lowest person, we are trying to communicate to the highest person, and we are trying to get, get, provide evidence, we are trying to become a data analyst, we are trying to, you know, so many things at the same time, but we can't put everything together at the same time. So you need to understand and learn these things one after the other. So and that is why we have this kind of training for us. So let's continue. I'm, I'm 
I've seen a question here. Please, it's not time for question. Now we have so we have so many so many things to do, so many content. The content is very huge, and I want to finish as much as possible. But maybe in the, in the process of uh, in the process of going through this training, you might get your answer. Please, a brief step by step of how to implement push. Yeah, you 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 you, you can you can meet me personally for this. I, I will we'll talk about that. So. After the vegetarian team selection and guidelines, how do you select your team and what are the guidelines? You know, management and employees must be included in the investigation. It's very important. You must have representative from the top management and also from the employees. From employees, that's how you should have a good committee that addresses a lot of issues. So part of the committee will also be a team of uh, accident response team. Multiple perspectives are invaluable. Investigation team must include or as access have access to technical expertise in safety. Technicality is very important. That's why we're talking about technical skills. If they must be expertise in, in the area of safety. Let's say, for example, process safety. Maybe you're working in a facility that deals with uh, pressure, that deals with thermometer, that deals with, with complex uh, operations and process flows. You need to understand so many things. You need to understand the area of measurement. You need to understand calibration. You need to understand how pressure affects them, pressure, how uh, um, pressure valve, if not operational, can lead to overpressure, and overpressure can lead to explosion. And if you have a flammable of substance, it can lead to secondary explosion. You, you should have team, part of your team in that management. Yeah, part of your team in, in that management that will part of your team that you understand the technical, the operations and the engineering of, of this, of the subject matter. Focus might be on finding causes for the issue rather than placing blame. You should focus more, the team should focus more on finding the root causes that we are going to use so many techniques here. And um, we are going to place them on the value of trying to get the result. That is the root cause and not to blame anybody. Collecting data as much as possible is also very important. Where you collect your data, apart from where the accident is happening, from the records you had in the past, record of near misses, maybe you have related near misses, record of unsafe practices, from all those records and their control that have been put in place, you can also get to data so you have to analyze and know how best you can prevent the accident from happening. Someone is asking a question. Uh, I don't know which part of the world you are from, but um, it's, it's in Naira. In Naira, it's 15,000 Naira. But if it, you are from, from, another, from another world, just chat me up on this number. From every other part, it's going to is is fifty dollars, fifty dollar, forty fifty dollar, depending on the on the on the exchange rate. We are trying to be fair as possible, to be as fair as possible. The training date is between first to third of September, and it will be recorded, and the recorded version will also be available for those who register for the training. So you are you are actually covered, and you can always ask your question at any point in time. So let's continue because of time. Please let us mute ourselves. Please let us, uh, our co host to please mute that person. It's very important. So, after the investigation, the sixth step to accident investigation to collect all necessary information, to collate them, to analyze the all causes, all, all root causes and, and, uh, and the immediate cause, access future accident potential. Look at, you need to look at it. After you've gotten your or root causes. What well, is there a possibility of, for this accident to happen again? The accident investigation does not stop when you have you have able to identify what, what happened and what occurred and what led to it. It doesn't end there. It end. It doesn't end when you put control measure. Okay, this happened. Okay, this was the issue. There was no guard on this machine. That was what led to the accident. Now we are going to talk about various techniques. Why was there? Why? Why was like the five wire analysis? Why was there no guard? The, 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 the previous one, they got spoiled. Why did they got spoiled? There was no proper maintainer. Why was there no proper maintainer? There was no established procedure. Why was there no established procedure? We don't have it in our, in our SOP. So we need to derive, we need to, need to start an SOP. That is, you've already had a terrible apple. Now, it doesn't stop there. You need to access future accident potential. What is the future? Today, we are having uh, this kind of accident. This is, a, this is a call of action that something else can happen. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop at that point. Like I used to say, when I go to site, I say, if I see a particular accident happening, or if I see a particular unsafe, unsafe condition, I would definitely assume that there's another unsafe condition. Because for that unsafe condition to be present, it means that another one will be present somewhere. So it's an indication of errors, loopholes in some other area. So you need to look at future potential accidents and generally look at your 
system of operation, you shouldn't just close, up, close a particular loophole. What if there's another loophole somewhere else? So these are part of the things we will talk in this training on how to access social accident potential using this uh, using these techniques that we'll be addressing in the course of the training. Then you develop collective action and you report data and recommendations and you take collective actions and ensure implementation of monitor and monitor improvement. So in the area of collecting data, see, like we said, you secure the scene, investigate the scene and record key information. You record key information. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. You record key information. Oh God, I'm flowing. I like where I'm flowing. Nobody should try to Thank you, sir. Sam, now, to prevent future of, of what am I saying? This is not distracted me. Now, accident investigation equipment that you, that you can use at the first stage, please kindly take the person out. If the person keep on unmuting himself, kindly take the person out so that he won't distract us and be able to focus on this training. So, okay, you've, Akim, I've, you've been coming and going this morning. I would, please, the, well, one of our co hosts should make Abdul Akim a co host also. And uh, Mr. Abanom, I'm making you a co host also. Please help us to address uh, any issue. Where's Abdul Akim? Okay. Please, Mr. Abdelakim Mukhtar, please, you are, you are now your co host also. Thank you. So, on site, secure the scene, investigate the scene, look out for why you are doing all these things. It's always easier in theoretical form to tell you do this, do this, do this. Uh, look out for witness. But in the real life form, it, everything is happening simultaneously. So, some people will immediately, even if they are in the workplace that there is a blame culture. People will leave immediately. So it's your duty uh, as you are securing the scene, as you are investigating the scene, as you are taking pictures, as you are clearing the way for, pot for potential future hazard, immediately you are citing those that are present at that point in time and you are gathering your information. You can also do this if you have a permit to work system. Maybe there was an accident in a particular location. With the permit to work system, you will know those that are working in that location. And from a permit to work system, you can know how to address or how to meet them. Okay, you are working with this person, or you are kind of doing operation when this happens. How did it happen? So these are ways that you can get people to interview in the course of yeah, in, in, in the class, they will tell you to interview people, to interview people around. But in the real life form, you need to know how to get them because most times they can run away. But understanding human behavior, BBL, you have safety, maybe another another training section will do that. Understanding this area of BPS, you can be able to know how to address issues with them and how to calm them down and let them understand that we are not blaming them for anything. They are, they are not the one that involved in the accident. We are going to prevent a future occurrence so that something bad will not happen to them. So you need to know how to go about that. So as an investigation equipment, like the camera, measuring tape, barricade tape, plastic bags with caps, graph paper, after investigation forms, and the likes. Those are the tools that you might need. So off-site, interview key people. You don't, you don't stand up immediately. You, you, you are not a journalist or a journalist. I think, yeah, they will start investigating where the accident just happened. You need to create, you need to first address the immediate cause and make sure that the, everywhere is calm. Then off-site, you start to interview key people. You look at past accident history. In review pertinent records, records of near misses, record of dangerous occurrences, record of unsafe. Maybe if, if, I, if you have like someone like me, I will have a record of unsafe behaviors of workers, workers of safe practices that I've recorded and I've um, given them certain action. So I'll look at such person that got involved in the accident. Okay, does this person have a record of unsafe practice? Does this person have a record of unsafe practice in the workplace? Okay. When we have near miss, what did, has this person ever ever reported any near miss to us? Has he ever reported any unsafe condition? What is the safety culture of this? What is the safety understanding of this person? These are ways that you can actually use to identify and make use of your safety records. Like we said, we're talking about data analysis on the third day of our training. This is just an overview. So part of the interview tips you give the person, put the person address, explain the purpose, tell them that you're not blaming them. Not fight, you are not you are finding facts and not finding the truth. Ask open-ended questions. Don't ask don't, don't ask questions of, that will give you that make them to, to tell you yes or no. 
Don't ask close-ended questions. Ask open-ended questions. Investigate the accident is very key. And if there is a worker who is, the same way we want to put on programs to, to accommodate workers, we should also put on programs to discipline those that, uh, that fail to follow procedure. But discipline can be very, can be very sensitive in the sense that it gives an idea or it gives a mindset. Like we said, we can do a, B, a BBS stream some other time. For example, what I do is that if a worker behaves wrongly in the work, what I do is I tell the person to go and write. Uh, you know, when we're in primary school, then not just school, they will tell us to write uh, what, uh, a sentence like 20 times in a page. I, I will tell them to go write, I'm a safety violator. I won't, I won't violate safety rules again. I will tell them to go write it like 50 times. If they can't write, they will go and find someone to write for them. So maybe they'll pay the person money. I don't know. They write it like 50 times and they'll write their name and sign. And at the end of the day, they'll look for like five to 10 witnesses, depending on the, on the unsafe practice, five to 10 witnesses to have them to write and sign that, yeah, they, they are witness to the unsafe practice to this person. And this person will, has promised not to violate again. So you go and look for 10 witnesses. In the presence of doing all these things, is passing a message to the to the to the person and also to the workers. Okay, some people we don't. Want, I've, I've done it practically. Most workers don't want to sign for the person, so it's passing a message that if I also violate, I also go through this process. So it's, it's passing a message and it's recorded. So all this recording, yeah, apart from investigating, you are also creating a kind of a disciplinary action, and that discipline is not just sacking workers. Those kind of yes, it might if it if it's a deliberate act. A deliberate act of the worker to cause serious chaos, it might lead to termination of the person of unemployment. But when it comes to wrong practice based on the culture that we have in the organization, using some other techniques can actually help in improving the safety culture rather than just doing the uh, using the end the end one. That is the area of uh, well, this is an area of BBS anyway. I don't want to I don't I don't want to divert from uh, an investigation to BBS. Let us continue. So reviewing your record. You look at the record of your standard work practices, record of your JHA or JSA, depending on, the, on what it may be called. Material safety data sheet, you look at your material safety data sheet. If the accident is chemical related, maybe there's a release of a chemical. And maybe for your accident, for your material safety data sheet, if you have communicated the hazard to the workers, because when you have a new chemical or a new substance in the workplace, it's your duty to communicate whatever is in the madras safety data sheets to the workers and there will be there will be evidence of communication employee personal personnel records management maintenance logs past accident history and inspection records so determining causes the root cause is the most fundamental and direct and direct cause of the accident or incident this may be one of there may be more or one or more conflicting causes in addition to the root cause Accident investigation is ineffective unless all causes are determined and corrected. You need to determine and to correct to know what are the root causes. What are the root causes? What are those things that actually led to the accident? And it's also very important. And that's how we determine our root causes. So they can be classified under workplace factors and employee factors. Please kindly switch off your cameras because we don't want to have any issues with network. So categories of root causes can be workplace factors and employee factor. Workplace can act as to do with the management, while work employee has to do with employee behavior. So the combination of both. Let me check the time. Workplace factors can be improper tools and equipment that was that was uh, that was given to the workforce by the by the employer inadequate maintenance procedure, lack of job procedures, poor work of workstation setup that has to do with poor economics, poor housekeeping, lack of job supervision, lack of job training. Employee can be based on uh, fail, failure to apply training, tax as if physical mental capability, risk taking behavior that they want to take risks, they don't want to take risks, they want to do it. Uh, we believe for the past 20 years, for the past 50 years, you know, they want to take that risk. It, it, so these are employee factor, fitness for duty, substance use fatigue, effect of medication or emotional distress. So understanding the for future potential, like we said, access the future potential, you know the particular hazard that we're talking about, and you know what happened, the accident that happened, what is the severity? 
is it minor, major, or serious? Is it something that could happen again? If something that is uh, that could happen again, that is a major one. If it's my, if it's uh, serious, that's class B, and if it's a minor one, that is. So depending on the severity, we are able to know how you can actually take note of possibility of having a future potential and doing your risk management, improving on your risk management techniques. However, you can use the same tool that you use for your accident investigation. Like I said in the, in the beginning of this training, I said they are similar. You can use the same tool that you use for your accident investigation. You can use the same tool to carry out your risk management. Risk management is like a proactive measure. Accident investigation is like a reactive measure, but the tools can work. In, it, it can work in both ways. Please let us move that point in. So, class A, like we said, is very severe, can lead to death, permanent disability, loss of life, body part, and damage. B is illnesses, serious injury, uh, disruptive, that property damage that is disruptive, but it's less severe than A. Then C is a minor injury, illnesses, and can also lead to destruction of property damage. So this is not for you. We are not having the training. So let's talk about, we are now going to the root cause, another step three, root causes. The overview of root cause is step for root cause analysis is, please, you can't have the slide. I said that at the beginning of this training, this is not a training to give side. This is, this is an overview of a paid training. If you are interested in the slide, just show interest in the training. It's for three, it's a three days training, and we'll, we'll be ready to 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 um, to. I, I will show down to you. We'll be ready to accommodate you because we still have uh, a good number of people that can still join for the training. Then you can have access to the training and the materials. So, define problem is the first thing. Then you collect your data. Use. If you are the type that use dashboard, Excel sheet for your data, you can collect your data of previous accidents, records, and the likes. Then root cause analysis, you can use uh, your fishbone, you can use your bow tie, you can use your, yeah, fishbone is also Ishikawa. You can use any of your root cause analysis to identify the root cause of, of this accident using these tools. Then test solution and implementation on your PDCA cycle. Plan, do, check, and act. Then you improve on the process, do your process evaluation, look at the differences, and uh, talk and prevent, present it to the management. So if you are interested, and present it to the management. Sorry. So if you are, so from there, Now, root cause analysis method. Like we said, in this training that we are going to give, you now this is an overview. I can't go into details of all this, but we are going to just go through it briefly. We have the causal factor tree analysis. We have the change analysis. We have the five whys. We have the inventory analysis. We have the failure mode effect analysis. We have the three fold analysis. We have the four tree analysis. Like I said, a combination of uh, inventory and four tree gives you the both types. So we are also going to talk about bow tie model, you know, and they are, they will, they will call um, hazard realization. You know, hazard realization is, is also very important. And that is where we have all these bow tie, because when you're talking about hazard realization, we are talking about knowing where the hazards are, are coming from and you're trying to put barriers in place. You are trying to act like a prophet of doom, you know, to look at worst case scenarios and you're not trying to put barriers in place to, to those barriers, you can call them line of defense or you can call them layer of protection. Yeah, these are technical terms that we, that we use in process safety. So these are part of the things we are going to talk in the event of this course. So barrier analysis is all what we talk about, talk about change analysis and uh, fishbone also. Well, some of these things are very, we are very familiar with them. Uh, it's just for us to know how to use them effectively. And apart from this, we also be giving you a uh, a PPT file, a PowerPoint presentation file that you can even be used to present these things to the management. Let's continue. Let me see if I'm not missing any slide. Okay, now. So, cost of factor tree analysis. When you're talking about cost of factor tree, it's, it's a very simple one. You are trying to look at 
the actual event that happens and directly you are looking at the symptoms. Then from the symptoms, you are looking at from your, what's it called? From your record that you've had, from your nemesis, from your unsafe practice, from your unsafe conditions, you might have been seeing some symptoms. So the after that happened already, but from your record, you'll be seeing, okay, we are, we've been seeing this, we've been seeing this, we've been seeing this. For example, one of the video, one of the, the case that we are going to use, we are going to use a very, uh, a very dynamic case study that has to do with uh, a management of change. There was a change due to a failure of a particular pipe used in connecting two vessels, two uh, reactors. Then the pipe that they use has a lower, a lower diameter, which led to an overpressure. Because when you, have, when you reduce diameter, there's an increase in pressure. Again, these are what we talk about in the, in, in the major training. So the symptoms that they saw was that there was an increase in pressure, increase in temperature, and you were having crack. So these are symptoms of problems. So you can relate this to any accident. Maybe you've been seeing near misses of people falling down, or been seeing uh, near misses of um, your scaffold getting uh, changing in uh, there, there's there are slight moment in your scaffold direction, or it can be based on human factor or behaviors. Maybe workers start getting uh, getting tired earlier than before because of because of uh, accumulation of stress, maybe from maybe the project is going to an end and they are now getting stressed. You no, know, you can you might have seen symptoms. Symptoms can be worker falling sick frequently. Depending on what the accident that happened, then you can now identify the symptoms of the problem. Then from the symptoms, you now look at the possible root cause. The possible root causes you can be as big as five, ten pages, depending on how good you are able to identify and how skillful you are able to identify this your these, these symptoms of the problem. Then for each symptom of the problem, you now talk about the possible root causes. Okay, um, our workers are now we've been observing that workers sleep while they are working, or workers are getting involved in uh, they are getting sick, illness, or whatever. Okay, those are the possible symptoms. Then from these symptoms, you now start looking at possible root cause. Okay, work uh, work pressure. Okay. Uh, accumulation of work stress, okay. Possibility of having of, of having a, a mal what's it called mosquito in the workplace. You know, we start identifying, and if it's process related, we start identifying the possible root causes. Then from there, you can now get the actual root cause. This is another view of causal tree, causal factor tree analysis. Then the fish bone. The fish bone talks about depending on maybe the environment or the service industry or the uh, process or technical industry, depending on what you have, then you have six, most times six, it can be less or, or more. You have six, uh, six, what, what would I put them? At the center line, the various areas that you need to consider that might have led to an accident. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. So that, that might have, led to an accident, the, the areas, you look at these areas, I'll just, I'll just show what in brief. Then for each of them, you now look at the possible causes. Okay, maybe there is a particular accident that happened. You've seen this accident. If uh, a crane fell down or while doing a lifting operation, there was a slit failure and it gave way or a scaffold or a scaffold uh, tumbled over or they got um, damaged, or an explosion, or an accident that led to maybe a machine caught the workers. And then you now look at each of these, at each of these at the center, maybe machine process, manpower, environment, or two material. They now look at how each of them might have led to the accident or might have contributed to the accident. So this is what we call the fish bone. Again, this is an overview. This, this is just a description of what we call the fish bone. So under the Ishikawa fish bone, we have five ends of manufacturing. In the manufacturing, you have machine, the method, the machine can be the equipment also, the method, the material, the substance, the chemical, the manpower, the measurement. You got you just call for, for, easy, for easy understanding, we call them the five A: machine, method, material, manpower, measurement. If it's in the service industry, we have the five S, the surrounding, the suppliers, the system, the skill, and the safety. And if it is for the environment also, they have the CSP, this process, the people, the policy, the plan, the product, and the program. 
So you can, depending on what happened, depending on the situation that led to the accident, depending on the accident that happened, you can now identify these key areas, these key, these key factors, and now look at the possible root causes, the possible causes of each of them. So it can be as much as, as well as five causes for each. So you are trying to understand what are the potential causes or what that have led to this failure so that you'll be able to understand how to put control measures in place to prevent future occurrence. Let's move on, please. So this is an example of a uh, fishbone. There's an overheating. There, uh, there is cow overheating, for example. A, a cow got overheated. Now, we are, we are using material. We are using method. We are using measurement. We are using environment. We are using tool. We are using, uh, we are using people. We are using all these things to identify what were the possible root causes. If you look at this diagram, when you look at material, for example, we have a broken belt. It can be that there's a broken belt or a worn out hose or a radiator coolant or the oil type that they used was, was the wrong oil type. Or it can be the method that was used, maybe the, the, the leaking, the leaks in coolant system because of the poor method that was used to the, in refilling or the poor maintenance procedure or mechanical issue or the style of driving. Maybe the person was driving beyond the required speed. Or it can be the measurement, maybe the measurement, the calibration was not working fine. The person that does not know where the device is. It can be the people, maybe the competence of the driver, or the or, or the person is not does not know how to how, how, how to drive very well, or the person who is doing the maintenance doesn't know how to carry out the maintenance. It can be the tool, it can be the environment. So depending on this, for each of them, you now analyze the possible causes that led to variety. So for each of them, you now know for now can now go further to analyze. Okay, how can we prevent the future occurrence? So there's what we call the change analysis. Change analysis is very simple. We are trying to understand the changes. Please kindly mute that portion. Don't you like ground flowing? Huh? So you're trying to look at what change, what is the difference? What when the, the accident happened, what is the situation? And when there was no accident, what was the environment like? You compare these changes, then you set down the differences. You can also do change analysis, maybe, maybe uh, okay, three, three months before this accident happened. What was the safety culture like? What was our data like? Then now that the accident happened, what we have a few weeks before this accident happened? What are the changes? You see that there is more work pressure. You now look at these differences and you evaluate the differences and you integrate these differences into the investigation process. Then you ask questions like who, what, where, when, working condition, what, what are the training events, the resources, the staff, the procedure, the management controls. So these are the things you look out for when you are using the change analysis. Like I said, we aren't, we aren't, we aren't going to go deep into all this because it's just an overview. So barrier analysis, also a very beautiful one. Barrier analysis is talking about what are those areas that we need to look out for. Also, this is also good for presentation to management, not present to management. You look at the technical barrier. For example, I'll be talking about lifting operations because I love lifting operations a lot. Lifting operations are, are one of the most complex part of construction. I, I personally, because when you are looking at skyscrapers, they didn't get there from heaven. They were lifted there, and they are actually beautiful. They are beautiful to look at when there's no accident. But when there's accident, oh boy, <laughs> you <laughs> everybody will be on their toes. So technical barriers. Okay, when an accident happened, what are those things that failed? Okay, the weak, the thing that was used was weak. That technical barrier. Lack of competence lifting operator. That's competent barrier. Absence of a lifting engineer, that's a, that's a technical barrier. Then you don't communicate the economic and financial implication. Okay, high cost investment. Rest, revenue loss due to lost time to attend to accident scene. When there's accident, it costs us a lot, a lot of money. So we are trying to create a barrier to prevent all this from happening. We are trying to create barriers to prevent all this from happening. The policy, legal, and regulatory. Okay, what does Redor say? No, Redor is in UK, actually, I think so. That is a report of incident, dangerous occurrences, diseases, you know, uh, records. We, we, are, we are also going to talk about uh, Redo in one of, I, I, I hope we get there today. I, I hope we get there. It's part of this slide. And it's also very important. Redo is in UK, but those are to get far from Nigeria. You can know if to understand Redo so that you will be more confident wherever you are going to. And, it's, uh, and it's, it's, it's very welcome in every part of the world. Then institution or capacity of organization, 
Maybe, for example, there was access of top part certification of, of equipment. Now, this barrier analysis is trying to look at what has happened. What is the effect? And what are the barriers that we should have put in place? The barrier can be made based on regulatory standard, based on policy, based on organizational policy. It can be based on factory act, like for example, in Nigeria. It can be based on workplace compensation act, maybe for the workers. But what we are trying to talk about is understanding the implication of this accident and how we could have put some barriers in place in order not to have financial loss, in order not to have, uh, uh, not to have, what's it called? Um, sanctioning of regulatory bodies and the likes. Now, five whys. The five whys analysis. Five whys can be more than five, as it came before. Five is always okay. They are talking about five whys. They are, they are trying to ask for why. Why did they happen? Why did they happen? Why did they happen? Based on this slide, we'll be using one of the videos that we can, for, for the main training, we'll be using one of the videos that we want that we plan to use. The video we want to use for our accident investigation and for our case study. So there was an explosion. That is the problem. That is the issue. That is the accident that happened. So when you look at five whys, the first question is why did the explosion occur? Why did this problem occur? If you look at what I wrote here, there was an overpressure in the piping system. There was an there was an overpressure in the in the piping system. Then the next question is. You can answer this vertically or horizontal, as the case may be. Let's answer vertically now. Vertically, okay, vertically now. Now, the next question is why was there why was why was there an overpressure in the piping system? Then the answer will be maybe the safety valve made to relieve pressure. We have what we call pressure relief valve. Maybe the pressure relief valve was not functioning, or it can be functioning, or okay. Then the question next question will now be why was the safety valve not functioning then you now answer that one again okay it is because there was an error in the calibration so it did, it did not indicate to trigger well, well, the other equipment the what's it called the consequence management equipment for over pressure so there was poor calibration next, next question will now be why was there poor calibration okay there's poor maintenance so it, that that's the five why then horizontally you now start asking why did problem go undetected? Why was it that the pressure that have, the overpressure was not detected till it led to explosion? Then you answer the question, then it goes down like that. Then why was the problem not prevented? Then you answer that question and it's the, for from the answer, you ask another another why. From the answer, you ask another why. That is another view of what five why analysis is. I hope I'm communicating. If I'm communicating, just put write five, five, five in the comment section. Let me know I'm communicating. Just write dot five, five, five on the comment section for me to know I'm communicating. So I will continue. I want to be sure that I'm not missing anyone. Okay. Oh, just one five is okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, okay. Five thousand five hundred and fifty-five. Five in walls. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Now, still on five point analysis. So after, like I said, we will be giving slides that you can use to prevent the management. That is for those that attend the training. We'll be giving these slides for you to be able, you can use it, and you can also use it on your own to be able to know how best you can, and you can use it, even use it to save for, for record purpose. You can put the PDF format and save it. Okay, this was the picture that I did. This was, this was how I tabulated it. This was the slide template that I used. You can also, we can always have this template for those that get involved in our training. Like we said, the training costs 15,000 naira only for those that will be interested. And it's going to be a three days training. We'll be involving in Jefferson analysis, as an investigation, and uh, safety dashboard. You can see now we are still on overview of the first one. And imagine we, we, we've not finished the, the first one. So let's continue, let's continue, let's continue, let's continue. So from there, you can now look at the, the question that you asked will be on the first side, and on the description side for the second question. These are what we we'll talk about in the paid version of this training. This is just an overview. So we have what we we'll call the four tree analysis. Like I said, four tree analysis and event. I, I will keep saying that 
fault even even if they are not coming for the pre training fault fee analysis and and event fee analysis most of them comes together to give us the poll tie it looks like the poll tie you know and the reason is this we are creating line of defense or layer of, layers of protection this line of defense for fault tree analysis you are preventing a you are preventing a release if you don't implement this layer of protection, it, there will be a possible release or a triggering event. Now, note this again. Note this again. There's a difference between a release of maybe an explosion and the consequence. We're talking about poultry, you are preventing a release to the environment, a release of an hazard to the environment, or to the yeah, let's use the word environment. Then when you're talking about the event tree, you are trying to prevent that release from having consequence. Example of barriers for uh for tree is your, your your plant design. Okay, let's look at uh there's this let's look at uh Piper Alpha, for example. How can I come in Piper Alpha? Oh, 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 I've not mentioned what I can what I can analyze like this. Okay, let, let's look at Piper Alpha. If you look at where the first explosion occurred, when it occurred, if there was a good plant layout, even though there was an, even though if if there was a good plant layout, the the first accident that occurred to the environment would have had much effect if there was serious plant layout, a proper plant layout, a proper design. If that design was proper and meant for the, the, the facility or the consequence that could happen, there would have been any release. If you remember that in that particular accident, the where the first, the gas, I think the gas, the CH4, the first thing that, 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 that occurred, the barrier, the barrier that was used was not strong enough to withstand that explosion. It was built to withstand fire, but was not built to withstand explosion. As it was built to withstand explosion, it would have contained that explosion and would have gotten to what it got to. So they are trying to prevent the release. That is what, 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 what you are talking about, the fourth tree. Now, still looking at that particular accident, when there was now a release of the gas, Remember that what happened was an explosion and not the fire yet. It was something that triggered the fire. It was, only, it was something that triggered the gas that led to the fire. So now, consequence is not talking about that is the inventory now, okay. We want to prevent this release from resulting into an accident. So from re, sorry, from resulting into the consequence. So now that will now include detection system. You know, even when there is a release of a gas, Maybe a fire that has happened. The next thing is for us to see how we can execute the fire. Now, before the, the, the our first layer of protection is the fourth tree to prevent that. In fact, I, 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 I'm already doing my paid section already. Why? Okay. I want to like only I was only this and I was I was doing that again. Now to prevent that release is those barrier that is all three so but when there is now after maybe there was a failure 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 and there was release remember we still talk about failure mode effect analysis that's another risk management technique now and there was a release now how do we prevent that release from getting serious from getting to greater consequence that is when we now talk about inventory analysis so i've, I've explained the two and the combination of both from the bow type so let me just put it simply for your event tree, you are talking about your emergency, emergency shutdown system. After there was a, after there was a release, there was an, your emergency shutdown system, your active protection, your fire hydrant system, your passive protection, your the, the pump that is used to the pump that is used to, uh, to to activate the fire hydrant, and our escape ev evacuation and rescue procedure. Those ones fall under event tree because we are trying to prevent the escalation. But for fault tree, you are trying to prevent the release. So I think that is very understandable and very easy to understand. So let me just go on. If you look at this diagram, the actual accident that happened is the 
a thermal explosion. So when you look at the, the breakdown downwards, you can see that there was lack of mitigation guard. There was decomposition of the DMT. They come together to form the explosion. Then from there, DMPAT is just the name of maybe the code of that plant. Then when you look, when you go down, you will see that they now analyze it one after the other. Lack of PHA. PHA is process hazard analysis. So in, uh, in our training, we're talking about jeopardy analysis. At the beginning of this training, we differentiated, we differentiated between uh, operational and safety and process safety. In process safety, they use process hazard analysis. Then we have lack of PSSR. That is pre-start of safety review. Pre-start of safety review. That is what you do before at, at the beginning of every activity in the process industry. You should always do that to start up your process. Then lack of management of change is also part of what they observe. So this is an overview of what fault tree analysis is. And I, and I believe that with my explanation, I've been able to tell us what fault tree is and what eventually is. If you got my explanation, just type yes, yes in the comment section, just type yes. I just want to see yes in case you got my explanation, just type yes, so I will continue. Please just type yes, 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 yes. I'm only seeing one yes. Okay, if you, if you didn't get it, it's it's very deep. Okay, I'm seeing enough yes. If you didn't get it, uh, our advice that you come for the for the pay section, but it's it's. I've tried my best to put it in an easy form. We still have a long way to go, and we have limited time. We have limited time. So another one is, another one is human error and management oversight. To put it simply, we're talking about fault. We are talking about fault tree, fault tree. You are trying to prevent the release of a particular hazard or of a particular uh, chemical or of a particular substance that could cause effect. That is fault tree. You are trying to create barriers. Like in your workplace now, you have some controls in place to prevent a fire from happening. Those are those are a fault tree. But eventually, it's talking about in case there's a fire, how do we attend to the fire so that it will not escalate? That is event tree. As simple as that in a layman term. I hope that is clear. So another one is human error and management oversight. You're talking about this is another one that talks about the event that happened, the actual accident that happened. Then we now go around. What are the the human errors? What are the human factors? What are the environmental factors? What are the root cause analysis? Poor management leadership. From each from the event, you can now, you can look at what are the possible causes that could have led to that accident. Is it that, that there was no warning sign? There was no proper calibration? There was no SOP? There was no training? There was no teamwork? Or there was fatigue and stress? Then yeah, from there, you now look at the management oversight. What are those things that the management overlook? Positive integration, positive culture, and the like. So these are these are other uh, techniques used in risk management and also in accident investigation. Another one is failure mode effect analysis. This one I go, I want I don't want to go into I don't I don't want to go into it because it's very deep. So if you, if you are interested in, in understanding, I'm very sorry because of the time. I still want to cover so many things. Hopefully, unfortunately, it's almost seven o'clock. Unfortunately, we won't be able to complete this training to where I wanted us to get it to. But if you want to, if, if you feel that it's actually that you, you, you join us for the training, it's not very expensive. It's not expensive at all. 15K for three days training on all these soft skills is very essential for us. So you can contact me more on, on it if you're interested. So let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. So in failure mode effect analysis, this one is talking about brainstorming. It's a brainstorming section. It's not what one person will do. Brainstorming section that help us to address what failed, what went wrong, what led to the leap hole. You are trying to identify various ways in which the system failed. As simple as that. From the beginning till the end, from the preventive stage to the emergency response stage, what are those possible places that failures could have happened? You are looking at the event nature, what happened, what is that thing that happened? 
And what led to the violation? What led to the release? What are the consequences? How do we prevent the escalation? How do we control and mitigate the effects? And what are the actions we need to put in place? What are the distraction? What, what are the detection system? They all will call RPN, that is risk priority number. This is majorly for process safety. They, they use this majorly in, in, in process safety. So our, our training is not only limited to the construction industry. You might find yourself in the process industry in the next future. So we are talking about looking at the possible consequences of whatever could have happened and how to mitigate it, how to improve on the system. When you look at this, this, this slide, you will see that there's an area for the past actual process that happened, the actual event nature, then the potential failure mode, the effect, the severity, the cause, the, the occurrence, the control, the, how do you detect, how do you improve, how do you de develop on the FMEA, and how do we improve on the system and prevent a future reoccurrence of the accident. So that is a simple overview of the failure mode effect analysis. We are just trying to look at the, the, the various loopholes and what could happen in terms of detection of an accident or of a, of a release. You know, in process industry, they, they focus so much on the release because that is actually over pressure and the likes, release of chemical, release of substance. So this, this is why it's somehow technical. So the, the three-part model, we will we'll not go deep into this also. It's also part of failure mode effect analysis. We are trying to look at the possible causes, the effect, the, the functional part, the operational part, the calibration, the measurement, how does it detect uh, uh, a, change in, a change in measurement? You know, these are part of the things that they look out for when they are talking about process safety in reference to failure mode effect analysis. Let's, let's move on, we don't have much time again. Then root cause analysis. Yes, this is the, this is the template. You have a lot of templates that you can use. So this is, this is one of the templates for root cause analysis. It's part of what we are going to give to us. You can use it at any point in time to actually uh, carry out your root cause. After identifying using all these techniques, after identifying, then you cannot put them down using your use root cause analysis template. We'll talk more about this in the pre section. So talking about bow tie, I've explained the bow tie already. So I'll, I'll be skipping the bow tie. Like I said, bow tie is like line of defense. It's a combination of the inventory and the fall tree. So just like I said, barriers uh, for, they are creating barriers for initiating events, they are creating barriers for escalating events. So to, to prevent escalation, I already explained this already, let's continue. So three pod, hmm. three pod model. You know, we have three pod, we have three pod beta. The difference between three pod model and three pod beta is that in three pod beta, there's a combination of hazard and effect management process. And uh, what's it called? And three pod. So it's three pod model in our uh, paste section. So the idea behind uh, report is that most uh, accidents and it's as a result of combination of PRM, we call it PRM, that is basic risk factors that we not identified. Basic risk factor that we not identified and it's contributed to accident. And when there's management errors, Technical errors and human errors start to follow. And that is what report tells us about. So because accident did not just occur, it's a combination of uh, uh, management errors and the likes. So this underlying is a call and it's not a bus rapid uh, transport. This is BRF basic risk factors. There are a lot of risk factors. I think there are 11 of them when it comes to risk, when it comes to tripod model. So we're talking about all these risk factors in our, uh, which we covered during the class session. There are 11 of them. Each has its purpose. So this is so this, this an overview of, uh, of no, when the selected be in nature, psychological preconditions like work stress, work related, uh, 
uh, of workers' behavior, then it leads to an active failure. Then the hazard combines with it, and the and it's it uh, the, the barrier fails and the event happens. So the combination of human behavior and the combination of an hazard and the management failure comes together to give us the event of an accident. So after you've done all these things, then you now start putting corrective measures in place, correcting the causes. Correct controls must, direct, must directly address each cause. So when you have identified your the root causes, then the corrective actions should identify each cause that you've, you've addressed. And if you have if you used one of these things that we talk about, you see that you'll be able to, you know, it will it will drill you to identify so many causes and be able to know how to address them, each of them competently. And we're talking about the eat list, you're talking about the hazard, the substance, the other materials, the engineering control, administrative control, training, supervision, PPEs, and the likes. So after that, you report your accident, you document your facts, you 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 prioritize corrective action instead of blame, like we said, based on future potential accident. You know, you make sure that your corrective actions are not only addressing the accident that happened, but addressing the future reoccurrence. So after that, then we talk, we are, we're talking about freedom, you know, reporting of injuries, diseases, and dangerous occurrences regulation 2013. So this regulation talks about reporting of accidents in no more than 15 days. I think the first one was 1995, before this one was reviewed, or came up in 19, uh, 2013. Talks about bro broken bones. We'll be addressing each of them, what you should report, and how you should report them. And these are what is covered on these slides that we have. Then taking action, making sure that the process, the progress of the system. Now start looking at, okay, are you having improvement in your system? What are you getting? How can you improve on the system? And how can you promote a good safety culture? Through job analysis, through interview of employees, through attendant experience and the likes. So a follow-up action can be taken on them. I don't want to go into this. A follow-up action, recommend for corrective action, make sure that they are implementing what you've identified. This is an example of a form. We have forms that we give us during, after the training section. And this, this is a scenario. We are going to paint this scenario. I'm going to give us an assignment that is for those that attend the training. And that will be what we are going to analyze from the accident. It's for the, for the training section, actually. So you don't need to bother about it. We are going to identify, we are, we are painting a scenario, apart from our case study, that will do a very good one. We are going to paint the video. And we're going to use it to analyze. It's very interesting, uh, a very interesting video. It's not Poba and it's not, uh, um, what's it called? It's not this common one, the other one that I mentioned. It's not any of those two. Uh, Piper Alpha, it's not Piper Alpha. So it's, it's, it's another one that we are going to use to create a case study for us. So this is just another one scenario base that we drafted ourselves with the help of my friend. Then we are going to come together and we are going to analyze that this accident also. So it's a whole lot of knowledge together. From there, we are going to give us an assignment also. And from there, we end the first section of the training. So this is a, a, just the first part of this is the first part of accident investigation. Part of our plan for the training is also please, uh, I'm coming, I, I will also briefly. So we, we, we won't go beyond this. We still have job analysis, and that is also very interesting, and, and uh, safety data. So part of what we will be giving for the training for, for accident investigation is what, I, what, I'll be showing you, what I'll be showing us now. We, we talk about uh, using safety data, safety data board for leading and lagging indicators. From a leading and lagging indicators, you can be able to know the potential causes or what are, what are those things that led to the accident. And we'll, we'll be using Excel sheets and the likes. I'm coming, I'll be, I'll be showing us the sheet very soon. I'm coming. I'll be showing us some, some of the sheets that we'll be using for the training. And with that, we'll end it today's session. So if you are interested in the training, if you are interested in, in the training, you can just show your interest. So I'm coming, I'm coming back now. So let me share my slide now. Um, which one should I show first? Um, 
Okay, let me start with this. Let me start with this. So, can you confirm that you can see this slide? Can you confirm that you can see my slide, please? Yeah, please, we can see it. All right, all right, thank you. Yes. So it's gone, no? Okay, I'll, I'll, try and, I'll try and reshare it now. Okay, it should be visible now. So, talking about hope. So when you have a, uh, when you have an accident at Apple, there are so many costs that come with it. The personal injuries, the material damage, the the investigation cost, the time lost, the time that should have been used for other safety safety issues is being used to carry that investigation. It might involve third party people to come in come into it. Insurance cost. You put this cost. You go to all the family. You 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 tell them that you need the value of all these accidents, the, the the monetary value. Then you put it in your report. Damage cost. If, if there was a damage and they and they need for repair, replacement. These are the cost. And from there. From these calculations, these are underground calculations. I also train us on how to actually use some of these data boards because using data boards is also very it's, it's also very important. Uh, Excel, you know, so it's not it's not that difficult anyway. Like this one will be uh, normally I will hide uh, normally as, a, as 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 a person who knows how to use Excel, I will hide this particular one so nobody will know where those data are coming from. It requires someone who knows Excel to be able to know that okay, I will click on this. To be able to unhide and see and, and and input my data, then hide it back. So these are part of those things that we will go through in the course of the training. So when you look at this, it gives us okay for January there was personal injury, uh, material damage. What was the cause? So you, you input all those costs there, and because we already have this template, you can just input your values. And from there, you get your results. So from, from, what, from whatever you put here, from whatever you put here, we now show up on this dash, uh, on this dash, the dashboard. Whatever you put there, we now show up on this dashboard. So you are, you are able to communicate, okay, this is total damage cost that we have. This is total replacement cost that we have. This is total productivity cost that it cost us according to what we are calculated. We calculated the cost of uh, the, the, the lost time cost, the lost time for to acquire the accident, the time that there was no production because of the accident, that's productivity cost. We already have these things in the calculation. And all what we have now is just for you to, to just put on, just put in your values, to just put in your values in this uh, in this Excel sheet. And before you know it, it will pop up on, on the dashboard. So that this is one of the uh, um, Excel sheet that, that will be sharing with us. Another one is, let me see this. Okay, another one is this. I'm very sure that you can also see this is very clear. So this also, you put in your data and this one talks about your leading indicators, number of trainings, number of oh, total, total manpower on site and other things that you have. Top risk factors based on what you observe from your data, so you, you put them here and you, you know, when you, sorry, when you communicate this with your manager and you're using things like this, they know that you are serious with your job. They, they know that you know what you are doing. And the value that, that they place on safety professionals comes from because you're now interpreting to them the, the implication. You know, we are reducing, um, um, uh, what's it called, business erosion. We, we, are, we are trying to prevent losing money. And we, we, tell money, uh, we tell people that it's not about what brings money in. It's about what takes money out. You should be focused on what takes money out. Because if you cannot be careful, you'll be... You'll be, you'll be you'll, you be bringing in money, and you and you know it within a day or two, you will lose all everything. So we are trying to prevent such thing. I can only present that with the use of all these kind of um, this dashboard, Excel sheets, and the likes. So these are also part of the. You are going to train us on how to use this and how to present it beautifully to the management. Uh, another one here is. Uh, let me see this. So let me share this also, and I will share two more. And that will be the end. Another one is this. It's also similar, but this incident dashboard, data, data bar chart. So you, you, you have a record of your accident. If, if I change these values here, if I change these values here, this, 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 uh, this stuff, these colors will change. It will change to increase based on the value that I change it to. So 
how to use it, how to make use of them. This for February. If I, I, I can change it to, to, to May, I think I'll, I'll address this. There is, those are the issues we used to have with Excel, but this is not an issue. It, it, it's not only picking. After the session, I'll, I'll address it. So I, I can pick for each month. Okay, 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 okay. I've seen the reason. I've seen the reason. I've seen the reason. I've not, I've, I've not made it editable. I'm coming. I'll, I'll make it editable now. Oh, pa, 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 pa. All these things they are seeing, they are not one day's job. Sometimes you really need to go into, okay, I want to go and learn. I think last month I, I went for a, a, a data analysis course then. So you can see it has reduced, it, it, it has changed. This, this, this is for June. This is for March. You can see it has, it has changed. So it, it's an indication of number of names. Okay, it has increased, it has reduced. This graphic representation is beautiful and it makes it good for 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 good presentation. And once again, it's not only about having this uh, this stuff. It's about knowing what to do. It's about the competence and it starts from the tools and techniques that we sell between us about. So our competence on all those things combined with these ones, we go a long way in improving to management our capabilities and our, our, our value in the organization. So I said I will, I will show you us two more. Okay, this is another one that talks about HSC incident prevent um, graphics model. It's, it's a very simple one. It, it's just this single slide. It just it can be in PowerPoint form anyway. So it just shows, it just shows us how we can reduce uh, um, what's it called and as a result of, of an accident from unsafe act, unsafe, unsafe condition near misses first aid medical treatment case. You can see that. And improve, you can improve behavior analysis. So you can look at, when you have this at the back of your mind, or you have this somewhere, you can look at your, okay, this is what I have. This is my incident model graphics. Training, monitoring, communication, consultation, development, and campaigns. So proactively, I'm, I'm improving behavior analysis through training, through monitoring. I'm improving positive reinforcement to promote safe behavior through communication, through consultation, and through development. And I'm also implementing good organizational changes through campaigns and inspection and enforcement. So these ones will reflect in our uh, in, in, in our unsafe acts, unsafe condition near misses as, as they reduce drastically till you see that okay we don't have any accident in the workplace. And the last one I'll be showing us that's what I'll be showing us which is actually that's what I'll be showing us which is actually on, on another course entirely. Because we, we also have safety data, HSC safety data training. What we'll be talking about lost time injury, lost time injury frequency rate, severity rate. We're talking about, we'll keep ourselves, we'll be training us on all these definitions and how we can apply them on our, on our safety data and how we can apply them, apply them on our Excel sheet. So look at, looking at this Excel, Excel sheet, for example, this, this has been uh, uh, reviewed and well edited. Like, well edited to reflect the, the true values of what we have. You can see that we only have dashboard here, but if you don't know how to how to use Excel, you won't, might not know that. Okay, you, there are areas that you can go and check what you want to what you need. Okay, for communication, for audit, for data, for analysis. Okay, I, I need for data, so it will come up. So now you have your data for the year, man hour, man hour manpower, number of staff, you have this record. Of this record, we always reflect on the dashboard. So these are tools that we can use, Excel tools, uh, safety data analysis skills are very important. And with training, with trainings like this, you can improve at least start from somewhere. And even if you are at the, if you are good with Excel, this training will, will, will boost your competence, competence level. And if you are at the beginning, if you are, if you are at the beginning, beginner stage, you can give you those simple tips that you need to know in order to be able to use this Excel sheet. And we are always open to always uh, come up. We, I think in March, we did a training on safety data analysis and it was 10,000 error. Yes, I think QHSC and I on safety data analysis, we, we, we did a training on that and it was 10,000 error just for that a day, a two hours training. And we have a good number of people that attended. But this time around, we are trying to bring the price very low. We are bringing out, we are giving us three trainings now. Accident investigation is one. Data analysis 
is another one, and we are adding job hazard analysis to it. And this will be great. We are not doing two hours training. Each day is four hours. We want to cover as much as possible. We want to we want to enlighten us. We want to train ourselves. It's beyond just going to pass exam for Nebosh or pass exam for IELTS. It's all these courses, all these Nebosh IELTS they are very good. The courses are robust. The courses are mad. I don't know what this word, mad, but. Well, even if we look at OSHA, OSHA administration, OSHA, just OSHA, OSHA, the OSHA Academy. If you look at OSHA Academy, if you look at the content, robust content, but how, how many of us actually go through the rudiment of reading them page by page? Most of us just go through them to pass exams. But having seen these technical skills like this, we improve our competence level. And you see that it's beyond the value, it's beyond the money that we actually pay. It actually has to do with giving value to ourselves. So this is, we also have uh, HSE uh, job as an analysis, but we won't be going into that uh, today. It's, it's, our time is fast spent. This is, this is uh, for 656. I know if I ask us that, should we continue? Most of us will say that we should continue, but we, we, might, we might not want to continue on this. So just let me just give us a brief of, uh, of, of the, what's it called? Of, the other uh, data analysis. Apart from the Excel part, where we'll be training us first and training on the Excel part, we'll be going into all these definitions, HSE data board, Excel data board, key performance indicators, KPIs, lagging indicators, leading indicators, difference between lagging and leading indicators, how to identify them, mandates, safety induction, true bus talk, trainings, coach meetings, inspections, campaigns, OSH rewards, audits, safety alerts, mock drills, these are the terms you'll be seeing in all those, you'll be seeing these terms in all those uh, safety data um, data boards. I'll be giving us the definition, first eight cases, first incident, medical treatment case, repeated work, work day case, permanent disability, permanent disability, lost work day case, lost work day rate, fatalities, digital occurrences, faster accidents, frequency rates, lost time injuries. So this, we'll be giving all these this definitions and many more. So these are part of the things, the stuff we have for us on our training that will be coming up between September 1st and 3rd. And even if you not be available, we have, we have it recorded and you can always watch and ask questions at any, any point in time. And we also be available for other services that you might need. And also we also give in-company trainings. You might, you might want us to come and train your safety team on, on, this, on this training, on these courses, or you might want your safety team to join us on these courses if you are more than five, we can give you this discount to come and attend this training. And if you want us to come to, to your facility, you can always we are always available for a lot of courses that you might need. If you think that your team needs a safety course, just call us, we will attend to you. So this is what we have for us today. I believe that you've learned enough, even though we did not go in depth because, and even with this shallow explanation, I believe that you all enjoyed this section. But in the pay, in the pay section, they, uh, they are posting my details there. Kindly contact us and will register you for the training. The training is just 15,000 Naira. If you have, if you're using a certificate of competency from our organization, please note, this is not Nebosch because some people will be asking me, what uh, certificate body am I using? This is not Nebosch, this is not IOSH, this is not IOSH, this is not uh, what we have. This is, in con this, this is technical safety skills training that we believe, that we've researched, that is somehow lagging and we need to actually close those gaps. And we are giving us this training at a very discount rate for three days, three trainings, job and analysis. In fact, job and analysis is even very, uh, is, is even another train on its own that we didn't even touch today. It's 15,000 euros, don't worry. I won't charge you too much, but for you, I'll be giving you 15,000, but it's 15,000, one five. 15,000 euros for the training. We only have 100, we only, what, what, we only want to take uh, we only want to take uh, 100 participants maximum. We don't want to take more than 100. And people are already registering. Uh, it's going to happen live on Zoom. Book your space and be available for the training. Yes, uh, I base in Lagos, but I'm very mobile. I'm very mobile. We've, we've, we've gone to as far as Abuja to deliver training for one of our clients. And we've, we've always done that. So we are very mobile. We base in Nigeria, but we want us to come to any other country, about discovered, we are always present. So we are based in Lagos and we are very mobile. So thank you very much for being patient with us. It looks like an advert, but it's, an, it's a combination of adverts and value.
is a combination of advert and value. A combination of advert and value. So please, if you have any uh, any question, if you have any contribution, please uh, kindly raise up our hands. So that is the end of the training. If you see value in the training, kindly drop it in the comment section. Okay, please, Mr. Dr. Raphael, kindly raise up your answer. That's sorry, kindly unmute yourself, sir. Okay, thank you very much uh, uh, for this very brilliant, uh, you know, training. I just joined not quite long because I've been so busy. So I uh, actually posted a question, over, I mean, a kind of question over there that uh, if it is possible for me to get your personal contact so that I can reach out to you for this uh, particular training, I'm going to schedule it with you, or possibly the one you just mentioned now. Is it going to be online? Or there is a is an is an uh, in person uh, uh, training, so so that I can see I'm going to program myself to attend it. Thank. You. Okay, it's a it's an online training. It's an online training that is scheduled to take place between first and third. So. People are going to attend the training, and if you are interested, to I will have uh, I will I will message you now on our on our WhatsApp now on our WhatsApp line. If you are interested in training, you apply, you register, and we'll book you for the training. If you are very busy, the recorded version will be available, and after watching, you can always come and ask questions. Sir, I hope that answered the question. Hello, are we there? I, I hope. I hope that answers the question, sir. Dr. Raphael. The network is hard. <clears throat> so, and uh, but I, I've sent my number there. Please. I will really okay. appreciate I'll, it. I'll, I'll, just... Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll chat you all. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, my friend, Rosui, sir. He said it is worth paying and attending. I, I hope to see you there. Uh, Engineer Sham is asking about step-by-step -step explanation on how to implement OSH management. System. Please, sir, can you talk, can you chat me up privately? This is part of what we do. Please chat me up privately, and we will, we will, we will address your question. Okay. Please, uh, Mr. Uh, Teres, Mr. Teresa Lainka. Please, do you have our number? Do you have our WhatsApp number? Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Oh. Okay. Okay, I would. I That's would why I'm sending my own so that you can give me your contact. Okay, I'll, I'll chat you up now. Thank you very much. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Walula. Right. Uh, good, right. good evening. Um, for everyone who is requesting for its WhatsApp number, there is a post that I've been reposting, and um, you can just follow that link to register in advance for the training. So it's going to direct you to his WhatsApp contacts. So just click on that link. So instead of you dropping your number, you can just follow that link and it will direct you straight to his WhatsApp contact so that you can have um, the um, training being booked. And also, in addition, this is not just um, a mere training. It's a training that is going to be ben beneficial because safety now is now more than just pursuing PPE and just getting data. Now, safety is more of data and how you are going to communicate the data to your management. And all this is just to ensure that you have detailed knowledge and be equipped with the knowledge to be able to present your data to a presentable format that you can use in communicating to your management. Because most people just gather data, number of man hour, number of this, number of that. And we are not still being able to know how to communicate it in terms of the commercial factor or the revenue it is preventing the company, which most companies only think HS is a liability and not knowing that even though we are not bringing in revenue, we are preventing losses. We are preventing expenses. So with this training that is coming up September 1, I believe if you attend, it would enlighten you more and equip you more and make you one of the 21st century safety professional whereby you would be able to communicate effectively with your management, with your data, because now it's about data. Thank you so much. Once again, if Sorry, you this is what I'm Which link? 
if you need his WhatsApp co um, contacts again, um, the link being posted on the chat. So just follow that link and it will redirect you to the WhatsApp page. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Akim. I really appreciate those detailed explanations. Uh, and I'm happy that, apart from myself, we, we are seeing uh, others who also see value in this training. So please let us try as much as possible. The link has been posted. Just click on the link. Uh, Miss, Mrs. Uh, Teresa, please just click on the link because I'm trying to see if I can chat you up here, but your number is not coming up. Just click on the link. I hope you've seen the link, Miss Teresa. I hope you've seen the link, man. So uh, please just click on the link. Click on the link. It will direct you to my WhatsApp number. Mr. Toib, so while please click on the link, it will direct you to my WhatsApp number. Okay, Mr. Toib is here. Okay, I will I will respond to all your messages. Uh, Mr. Richard, have you chatted me up on WhatsApp, Mr. Richard? Mr. Richard? Okay, I think. Okay. It's for fast. I Yes, I have. I've uh, sent a text on uh, WhatsApp. Okay. This okay, is okay. Richard. Yes. I think someone has a question. You said after investigation is for fact finding, not for training. In one of the models I saw, you mentioned management sports. Please, why is it so? When you talk about it's for fact finding, not fault finding. Please. Is for fact finding. You are finding out facts and not fault. So, when we're talking about management fault, it's not really management fault. You can call it management errors. The, what we are talking about is that putting blame on workers because most times the, the the direct the 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 direct party to an accident is most times the workers, and we tend to put blame on the workers. Meanwhile, most of the accidents are caused by management errors. So that is what we are talking about. You get it. So. We are trying to address it from the area of management, from the area of management and not workers for, because when you, do, when you are into blaming workers for all the accidents, you end up having a workforce that will not give value to their work, that will not be productive, that will only be working because they said they should work. They will only be working because they are under pressure. They will be working because they want to get something home. They won't be working as a result of seeing themselves as part of the team, of the, man the management team, as part of the those that add value to the organization because you are always putting blame on them. So that's what we are talking about, that it shouldn't be seen as fault. You should, should not put blame to try to look for the worker to blame. Not looking for a worker to blame, but look at where were the errors fact-finding and not workers blaming. I hope that answered the question. Okay, thank you, ma. Um, will there be a separate training on safety data analysis? I feel this three, day, this three days might not cover. No, we will try our best. It will cover. The three days will cover for the trainings. The three days will cover for the trainings. The, we have already done our, our, our schedule and we, we believe that the training will be Will be the three days will be enough. We are always doing great. More blessing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for those for that. Uh, Constant Akabu DK. Have you chatted? Have you have you messaged on WhatsApp? Because we have so many numbers there that I can't save. So thank you, Mr. Abdullahi. I really appreciate my very good friend. My very good friend. I really appreciate your presence. I could have taken uh uh, what's it called? I was taking a picture, but because I was I was involved in the training, so uh, I I I, I missed that. But we, we we had more than fifty persons who joined us, and it's it's really a very interesting training. Three days may not be enough if there is no network echo. 
Okay, yeah. three, three, okay, yes, three days will be enough. Surely, surely, three days will be enough. We will try our best as much as possible. And I believe that we are all in for this training. We are looking up, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone there. Thank you all for your time. Thank you all for for being a part of- Sir, I have, I have a question now. Okay, please, sir. You can come up with your question, sir. What, you talked about the three days. What are the time, as in time for the training? Okay, okay. The time is between 12 to 4 p.m., but it is flexible. And why I said it's flexible is that we have it recorded also. So, you know, sometimes someone might not have the time to join or so, but since it's recorded, the person can listen to it and will ask questions later on those areas. Even if you attend, the recorded version will still be available for you. Okay, so after attending, um, let's say assuming um, I logged in by 12 and I logged out by 1, then um, would the recorded version be sent to us or? Yes, the, the link to the recorded version will be sent to everyone. Okay, all right, thank you. All right. So um, thank you so much, Mr. Waliola, for this um, informative um, training. And um, also, I believe most of us who always want to be a party of this. So for us to always um, get updated, um, the link to our YouTube channel, Safety World TV. Uh, uh, the we link can't hear you again, Mr. Hakim. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me? Is it my name? Hello, can anyone hear me? Hello, can anyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Yes, so, yeah. Okay, good. Thank you so much. So I said um for you to be updated about all the trainings we are holding every Sunday and um also our YouTube channel. Um the link will be shared now. So you can always follow the link to join our YouTube channel, um, the Safety Word TV and also to join the LinkedIn page and um, our Facebook page for more updates and information. We do have um, many um, informative free webinar section, especially on Sundays. So, and um, it would be very nice if you could also join us so that you can always have first-hand information. And if you know any of your friends who might be interested in this um, training, this 3 days training that is coming up, you can also copy the link and also help us share to them so that they can also benefit. Because um, by trying to make your friends to benefit, it's also a way of also doing your own personal social responsibility. So thank you so much as we look forward to seeing everyone of you um, by September 1 for this wonderful, um, fully informative training. Thank you once again. Thank you. Mr. Waliula, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Blakim. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much that you, you, you've made us to understand. you made us to understand that it is beyond just uh, it is beyond just the, the training, but also to continue to promote safety culture. So join us on our, uh, on our YouTube channel. Join us on our system media platform. We host on Saturdays. Yes, thank you, Mr. Abulakim. I think I just remembered now. Next week, we have an another professional who will be taking us on a very important topic in health and safety. So join us next week, Saturday, for uh, a, a safety and lightning moment. And for coming Saturday, sorry, Sunday, sorry, coming Sunday. And the other Sunday, too, we're having a top diver, and also in health and safety, who will be taking us on a very important topic in health and safety. Thank you, and God bless you. Join us on our social media and go to our YouTube channel. The link, is on our, the link is there for our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, share our messages, and let's continue to extend the safety knowledge and uh, expertise. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Abulakim. Thank you, Mr. Abanom, for coming. We appreciate the presence. Elena, my very good friend from another country. Thank you. Engineer Shamsuddin, thank you. Ifunaya, Zakariahu, Mr. Thank Abo, you, thank you. Ale, thank you. Oyekachi, Yolua Tomisi, and everyone, Mr. Richard, Mr. Chrisley, Mr. Sammy, our first person to join. Thank you, sir. Thank you for wonderful. Thank you very much, Mr. Eunice. 
Thank you, Ifunaya, Mr. Darlington. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Thank you, and God bless you. We call it the end of today's training. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, sir. Is, what is my safety videos? Always share my safety videos. It's not easy to make videos. It's not easy to make videos, people. <laughs> bye bye.